Hi, it's Hazel, and welcome to my channel, Hazel Naka Design. If you are in the mood for some eye candy, you have come to the right place. I am going to be talking a bit about my dyeing process, as well as showing you the results of the latest big batch of dyed uh, pia player piano paper I've done. Now, I deliberately left this section uncut. Um, piano paper rolls are typically 11 inches wide. So that works out perfectly. Cut it eight and a half and, you know, that's how I make up the paper packs that I sell um, on Etsy and the Maker's Market. <coughs> if you haven't heard about the Maker's Market, it is an online gathering place for buyers and sellers, um, community engagement, support. Um, maybe, that, maybe that's my elevator pitch for the Maker's Market. And the link to, to it is always in my uh, description box, as are my other links. Um, okay, so where to begin? I left this particular section <coughs> uncut because, well, number one, I have a fairly long island in my kitchen with a quartz countertop that I don't have to worry about, you know, it being stained. So that's where I do all my dyeing. And <coughs> is it going to be one of those videos? I certainly hope not. Anyway, I... Um, unroll i i keep the paper intact and then cut it after the fact rather than pre-cutting it because you know that would be kind of a pain because it's so tightly wound that it's curvy and anyway this just works uh, better and smarter and faster for me so i wanted to show you that side by side using the very same dye batch look at the variation in color <coughs> now i keep saying you know i'm not a scientist i'm not wearing my lab coat and my safety goggles when i talk about some of my theories about what happens and why it happens but i do have a few theories so <laughs> first of all <laughs> you know there's got to be there's got to be a twist to this you, you just know that so typically I like to die on a day that my husband is at a council meeting because I know that's a long day of his absence. I can commandeer the kitchen. I can spread stuff everywhere and, you know, without interruption. So that was my big plan. I found the, the boxes of uh, piano paper that I wanted to use. I had those out. However, I didn't have the foresight to thaw out the jar of dye that I had put in my freezer. So when dealing with perishable um, things, <laughs> you know, whether they're avocados or purple cabbage, or in this case, believe it or not, blueberries, I had a, a, a bag of frozen wild blueberries and it, it, it was so old it could have been carbon dated. And, you know, things lose their, um, their appeal and probably their nutritional value when they're years old. So, um, and I never would have thought of using this if it wasn't for Brenda. Uh, Brenda Clark, a.k.a. The Simple Crafter. And I will try, I'm trying my best now to, if I mention people's channels, to just have that little section in my description box box under channel mention. So you've heard me talk about Brenda before. We've met, we've exchanged, we did our journal swap. Um, anyway, she, in the journal she gave me, she included some beautiful blueberry dyed paper. I'm thinking, oh, blueberries, you know, antioxidants, beautiful, tasty. I would never use blueberries to make dye. Um, however, when you've got some freezer burnt ones, it seemed like a good thing to do. So I had made up the, the batch of dye. And let me show you, if you missed that video, 
Where is that pile? I have so many piles of stuff to show you here. Okay. Um, now, I did share these results earlier. This is what I got the first time I did a blueberry dye. And I'm thinking... Why? Why? I mean, it's beautiful. Don't get me wrong. It's beautiful. But it was not the blue that she got. It's more purple. So, okay, the, the, curio the curious person, the curious part of me wants to know, is that because these were wild blueberries? Is that you know, the difference between, you know, those and cultivated blueberries? Um, is it because I boiled the living daylights out of them? She apparently does it a much shorter time than I did. So you can see, basically, you know, maybe with the exception of this one that has another purple in it, pretty well the same color. This is different colored paper to begin with. Oh, look at that. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Um, <coughs> so I had shown you this. Now, of course, it also depends where in the stack. Oh, so this would have been the right side. This would have been the wrong side, which makes the paper really versatile, of course, because, you know, you don't have to worry about, oh, what am I going to do on the other side? Anyway, so this was my first result, and I was kind of, you know, flummoxed about why it went the way it did. Let's put those aside. If you have been, I guess, lucky enough to get some of my um, um, <coughs> purple cabbage dyed paper in Happy Mail from me, or if you have purchased some in my uh, shop from my shop you know that this is kind of the color that I get with purple cabbage so this I would say is more like the color of what Brenda got with her blueberries is this not a gorgeous piece of paper anyway you can see <laughs> you know like every woman does, you know, make sure company or make sure others get the best pieces, the biggest pieces, the, the, the nicest stuff, and then save the scraps for yourself. So these would be um, sort of the cutoffs because, of course, a roll of piano paper. Number one, rolls are not created equal. They are not the same length necessarily. So, you know, there are all these kinds of strips left and I don't mind that because frankly I will use them in collage um, and so on but I wanted to show you okay so this is what I typically would get with purple cabbage and I oh see just as I'm talking to you I just debunked one of my own theories about why the color ended up the way it did I thought that the last time I used my um, you know, doilies and, and whatever, I had done purple cabbage, but that's not true. The last time I dyed anything was those papers that I just showed you. Because I thought, okay, well, that would explain why there's a variation in color. Because a certain amount of dye is always left on the doilies or, or whatever. And of course, there's going to be some transference. Um, from that to the new um, to the new th papers that you're dying. Now, if you have, uh, and really, I, I'm sorry if this is too basic and elementary for you, um, but I know a lot of people love the look of this paper, and, and I think, you know, maybe people will get something out of me rambling on here. If you have never had the pleasure of, oh, can you hear that rain falling down? I mean, <laughs> as opposed to the rain that falls up. Um, it is a very gloomy day here. I have my 
uh, new lighting, hopefully no shadows. I really wanted to be able to highlight these colors because they are good enough to eat. Um, anyway, so piano roll paper is um, obviously has perforations in it. Maybe I should move this piece out of the way. So up until now, I have never included in my paper packs this and, okay, here's where there would have been um, probably the name or, or the company name or, or the song name or something. Holy cow, is that rain ever coming down? This is not good harvest weather, people. I've never included this in the pack because I thought, well, you know, how do you do it, blah, blah, blah. So I've, I've always uh, kept these for myself, as well as the other end of the roll. Um, and I'm sure I have a piece of that somewhere. Well, I'll just show you. I, this time I decided that you know, maybe, I, who knows, maybe I'd even put a package together of this or I'll just, again, continue using it myself. But again, look at these color variations. Okay, so I've said that this is the one end of the roll that I imagine got hooked onto something. That's what pulled the paper through the machine. The other end typically ha is fairly plain. Not fairly plain, it is plain. It doesn't have many holes, and that would have been the, you know, several rounds of plain paper that were um, typically taped, well, not typically, but all the ones I've ever seen, have get taped to the, the spindle. So, as I said, okay, so this would be the other end, or part of the other end. This time I decided, Okay, I will um, pretty well die right to the end if I possibly can, depending how the spacing works out on my island, and just see where that goes. I mean, even um, if a person, like again, I guess trying to be a mind reader here, um, the paper in itself is lovely with or without the perforations. The perforations clearly make the paper weaker because um, it doesn't take much to tear from here to here to here and so on. But again, we are creative, resilient, um, resourceful people and we're going to make the teeny tiniest bit of paper work for us. We're going to find a use for it. Now, as far as I know, nobody, uh, I was hoping to find a piece of paper here that shows the big brown tape that they use. Oh, here's one. Okay, see, this is the kind of tape that they use to tape the end to um, the spindle. And look at this. I couldn't have done this had I stayed up all night and planned it and um, I'm not sure why there's a piece of scotch tape on there. I have so much I want to tell you. <laughs> um, save that tape. Anyway, I want to point out that um, this these paper packets have been my best selling item in Etsy and I'm very grateful for that I'm glad and I've had repeat customers and so on and I'm very grateful for that but I have to say that I think the price is going to have to go up somewhat because up until now I have locked out and I've been able to buy I think three at three different times from three different sources I've been able to buy bigger lots of piano paper. If I was having to buy it a box at a time at some of the prices that people are asking, I mean, number one, I wouldn't do it. And number two, you wouldn't be buying it from me after I've put this much effort into it as well. So anyone who's dyed paper knows how labor intensive 
a project it is. Oh, you know what I want to do? As I'm talking about the mechanics of this, I wanted to show you the results I got. And I promise to try not to gush about every single piece. I'm just going to... <laughs> I was going to say silently, but this isn't a, this isn't a, a silent movie. I'm going to just sort of flip, and that way you'll get to see top and bottom. And you'll see a variety of patterns, because, of course, I thrift the, the tablecloths and the, and the placemats and so on that I use. So even though I have some nice big pieces... I also have some dinky little pieces that when they all piece together, it becomes pretty random. I also, when I'm putting my paper packs together, do a variety. So, you know, like a 10 pack, a 10 piece pack will not end up being, you know, 10 of the same design. Now, each one is clearly different from, you know, they're like snowflakes. Everyone is different. But I try to, to mix it up a bit darker, lighter, this design, that design. So, um, and again, people are happy, so I'm happy. But I was talking about price. <coughs> um, as far as I know, there are no more player pianos. Uh, nobody's using them. Nobody is making this paper. A lot of it is from the 30s, earlier, later. And once it's gone, it's gone. So um, I'm not close to running out just yet, but I'll tell you that uh, between those scrap pieces that I've shown you, the sort of the cutoffs, this pile, which is perhaps two inches tall, and this piece that still has to be cut up, that was seven boxes of paper. So it doesn't go particularly far. So that is, you know, it's one of those things, the scarcity of the raw material. I also, no, oh, I said I'd be flipping. I also uh, started to say that anyone who's dyed paper knows how, look at this, knows how labor intensive this is. So number one, like anyone can boil a pot of a strong tea or coffee it takes quite a bit more input cost and time to make dyes of other things whether it's onion skins avocados you know the price of avocados uh purple cabbage you stink up your house for the for a day or so um this all takes time you know, you're you're running your stove because you're boiling this stuff. Um, I don't know how many uh, spray bottles I have bought over the years trying to find ones that last in the long run. Some of them are just not worth the money you pay for them. So um, then the paper itself, then the time. Look at this. Can we have a moment of silence? Can we have three seconds of silence? Um, the, um, the actual dyeing process, so that takes several hours. The drying process, so, um, and I was very patient this time. I didn't start picking at it. So it's all layered. So just layer after layer after layer. That now I've never taken the time or trouble to to identify. Okay, this was the piece that was at the bottom, although I do have a theory. So maybe when I come to that one, I'll I'll say that. But so where in the stack the paper is? Oh, you know what I didn't bring when I was running out of. I didn't have any more doilies. Um. And I was running out of that batch of dye. I just did some uh, white rectangular <clears throat> uh, paper doilies for the top. And of course, they're someplace else, so I can't show those to you. 
anyway, then it took me a good two hours, time I'll never get back. <laughs> and, and please understand, I'm not complaining. I'm just mentally, and now t sharing it with you, kind of trying to do the math on this and thinking, I love doing it. Let, let me just say that when I peel those things off and look at these results, my heart is happy. However, to stay um, <laughs> solvent, to stay, you know, to stay in business, a person every so on, every so on, every so often needs to uh, think hard about how much time um, and money and effort is going into a particular um, thing to get those results. So, very labor intensive. So, of course, um, I will then... Now, these turned... I don't know if it was because I let them dry overnight and, and in fact... The top ones, of course, were drier than the ones at the bottom. So I then spread them all over the living room. I draped them over, you know, furniture. I spread them out on the floor. I did all of that so they could finish drying. Typically, I would also then put a stack like this under um, a, a lot of weight to flatten it out but I didn't have to do that I don't know why this turned out as well as it did but again just drawing your attention to the color differences here um, so <coughs> sorry what was I going to say I don't remember maybe it'll come back to me now, when you buy paper, you can expect that there might be, you know, things like this, where just the cut, the tear ended up being right at, at a point like that. I've never had anyone object to that. I think people understand that this is a handmade product um, using fragile, um, um, you know, I started out with something that was fragile, it obviously doesn't get stronger with the handling. Um, so anyway, I didn't iron or press or anything. This is just how this came out. Now, something like this, I would end up trimming that further um, because it doesn't, it won't fit nicely into the packaging. Oh, that's where I was going. And of course, in addition to this, I then have to uh, put it into, you know, probably cellophane or sometimes I've used... Um, a file folder and an envelope and and so on look at this so that's just me saying that's what the reality of the situation is like so I'll just sp speed up here a bit okay so this time I decided this is the end of the roll here I left the tape intact and I thought, well, who doesn't love some speckled um, tape as well? If we save tape from other things, why wouldn't we want to use this tape as well? Here's another piece. See this? Oh, see this has that fold in it. I should have probably... Anyway. <laughs> oh, look. A built-in pocket. Um... Now, for somebody who loves purple, and let's just say Purple Lovers Unite, um, I think there are many of us out there. So, of course, this is... This is like crack cocaine. Um, look at those little dots, those little circles. Oh, <laughs> so I have said that I use a spray bottle. I've said I don't bother covering the island with anything because it's a quartz countertop. It's not going to get ruined. Now, you can also tell here that the base paper was a slightly different color. 
same batch of dye. I cannot stress that enough. And I, and I must have, well, I obviously got a huge batch because, okay, you know those big jars of, um, uh, probably like say dill pickles or something like the big jars. So I had a complete, uh, like two of those and I've not even finished using the first one. So luckily the dye goes quite far. Anyway, so here I am spraying. Oh, and another thing, rookie mistake. I didn't wear gloves and I don't know, must have had a brain fart or something because Obviously, we know that we should wear gloves if we're dealing with uh, dye, uh, like inks and, you know, those sort of commercial dyes. Somehow, I forgot or didn't process that just because it's, a, it's coming from a natural product doesn't mean that it won't stain. Case in point being, if I'm peeling beets because I'm going to roast or boil them, I always wear gloves because my hands are going to be stained. Anyway, I had the purplest hands. See, some of these knuckles are still stained, and this is days later. So, number one, wear gloves. Um, anyway, so I'm spraying. I'm, you know, starting new rolls. I'm layering my, my uh, doilies and my tablecloths and so on. Only at the end of all this, when I've done, okay, so here's where I would have used small doilies. Only at the end of the day, or at the end of the dyeing process, do I look around and realize that it looks like there's been uh, a catastrophic home invasion and blood splatter everywhere. Because the droplets on the floor and on the cupboards are kind of a bright, not bright, but a deep red. So after the blood spatter expert was gone, I began cleaning up. This was a piece of paper towel that I used. Um, oh, I think I just had this by the, I was wiping up by the sink because I was filling my spray bottle using a funnel. Um, and that, you know, makes a little bit less um, mess. Anyway, so this, if this is our, um, wait, what do they call that in science? Mm, you can tell I haven't thought about science for a long time. I can't think of the word. This was a white, paper towel, wiping up spills on my counter. You can see there's blue, there's purple, there's kind of almost a, um, I don't know, what would we call that? Ra not quite a, not as bright as a raspberry color. So we can't say that the color variation came from dye residue on the stencils or the tablecloths because it didn't, it, it shows the variation in this white, oh, control item, let's call that, let's call it that. Anyway, I'll keep going here. So I didn't think I would end up having to Swiffer my floor and wipe down all the cupboards I have. My cupboards are um, sort of um, bone color. So yeah, it did look kind of like something bad had happened in there. And of course, it was the opposite. Something wonderful had happened in there. But just be aware of that. Um, you know, if you uh, attempt this at at your house, just be aware that if you're spraying versus, um, you know, how some people like to to spread their dye with, um, by dipping it, like dipping a brush and spreading that way. So you can see, just to reiterate the point, packages would include a variety of these papers. So it's not like any one person would get 10 of these and none of the others.
need I say more? <laughs> and then I, I, as I was looking at these and thinking, oh, it's so gorgeous. I was kind of thinking, okay, what would the end user do with these papers? Well, I think it depends. Obviously, that's personal choice. Clearly, they could be signature pages. They could be collage fodder. They could be used um, as highlights or as focal points on tags or pockets or anything. Now, the paper, uh, I felt this before. I don't know uh, if, <laughs> if I'm delusional or what, but somehow I almost feel like the dyeing strengthens the paper. I could be blowing smoke there. I, I don't know. It's just kind of a, a feeling that I have. Uh, that's not to say that it's strong. It's just that it's... Um, I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so something like this. So the back side of this would be, you know, if you use the right color pen, could certainly be uh, written upon if you you know, used it in that way, used it as a signature page. Anyway, let's speed up. So that's kind of the color that would have been on the floor and the cupboards. Why is it like that? Who knows? Here's more of that tape. This will have to get straightened out. Um, In some, now I would suspect, I can't remember what layer of thing I put down first, but I'm thinking where there are these big pools of color that that might have been near the bottom. Because let's face it, what liquid will always find its own. It will take the path of least resistance, whether that's flood water or whatever, it will find its way and pool or puddle or ruin stuff in your basement or whatever. Doesn't that look as though I had doodled it with a pen? Anyway, um, I think I can do a shout out to Caroline. Caroline's craft tree. Caroline loves purple as much as I do. Now, she has done some incredible paper dyeing. Look at this. Let me just hold it still for a second. Look at the variations in this one single piece of paper. So there's sort of what we'll call white space. There's that very fine detail there, this, this ornate thing that's happening here. A, a different color there. Can't get enough of this. Anyway, I I said to Caroline, it seems to me that I have to start a... That looks like doodling as well. I have to start an, an envelope or something of Happy Mail to send her way because I just feel like it. So let me speed up. I don't know how long we've been at this. Uh, my husband, our, one of the our, you know, three-quarter ton truck, you know, sort of the farm workhorse, the runabout, um, has been giving him trouble lately. So he, he ran it uh, down the road, well, down the road, 50 kilometers away to a service, like a mechanic place. We call that a repair shop, I guess. And uh, obviously he's going to have to leave it behind. Now, unless they give him a loaner vehicle for overnight, I am going to be getting the call. See, I think this might have been my bottom layer, this particular design. Um, I'm going to be getting the call to say, come and pick me up. So I was determined that I was going to get a video done before that. Does this look like an advanced case of chicken pox? <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Sometimes I crack myself up. 
Um, another thing, now you can't really tell very obviously, not all um, piano paper has words running along the side. So that's another thing to be aware of, that some paper has lyrics and some paper doesn't. Okay, let me, I should probably just flip through the rest. Oh my goodness, let me, well, maybe we're getting to something more interesting. Now, why did this go like this? I don't know, but I was thinking, okay, so what would a customer do with this? What would I do with this? I'm thinking for those people who really love Halloween, and like that, you know, that dark and, um, well, that dark <laughs> element. Here's some green for some reason. These papers would probably fit in beautifully. Because even when, if you look at the, the Halloween stuff that's in the stores, quite often there, um, a lot of the elements are purple. A really dark purple. So, okay, let's get past it. More greeny yellow for some reason. Again, green. And I don't know how well some of this is showing. Okay, you can see along the edge, the green. Why, 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 why? Here's some yellow even. Don't know. Okay, so we're kind of more in the... And the brighter tones. Just get past some of these. This, look how much whiter this seems than, than that yellowy one. Can you, I don't know, can you see? Am I still, yes, I'm still. Okay, so see how much whiter that is than that? So that's another variation that you can expect. Okay, we're getting down, down, down. This almost ha has a watercolor look to it. Okay, now look at this. Why is this? This is almost like navy blue. And this is, <laughs> well, I've probably gushed on enough about this. But I just, I don't understand it and I guess, you know, it's like my microwave or, or cell phones. I don't need to know how they work. I just have to take advantage of the fact that they do work. Hmm. Compared to that. Now, if you know the answer, or if you have a theory, by all means, include it in the comment. In the comments. This is a blue-green, so would not be nice if a person was doing a, like a blue-green project of some sort. That almost looks like a Mandela or something. And, oh, look at this one. <laughs> Can you tell that I love what I've done here? And I hope you do too. I'm going to stop there because who knows, I could get the call. Come save me. Come pick me up. I hope that this has been somewhat instructive to you. And I hope that even if you never try this on your own, you now have a new appreciation and um, awareness about what people who do dye and sell dyed paper uh, put into making the product that you love so much. Um, I guess 
what I want to say, or the, the notion that I need to remember is maybe I need to set aside some of these pages for myself and stop hoarding them, stop selling every single piece and begin taking advantage of these beautiful, beautiful papers, these one-of-a-kind papers. And, um, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I better stop. I'm making a fool of myself here. Um, please, if you have um, questions, if you have uh, a theory as to why things went the way they did. If you have an experience uh, paper dyeing on your own that you might want to... I think I put this one aside for myself because I'm thinking, okay, why would I cut off and have a strip when I could easily just, you know, have a fold, a flip back or something like that. So I did put aside some odd ball sized pieces for myself. Anyway, if you have uh, anything to say about this, please do. I welcome your comments and your theories. I welcome when you teach me something new. And um, we will see you guys in the next one. Thanks so much for being here. Bye-bye.